Hello everybody and welcome back to Flying with Overkill F-18C and today we're going to be taking a look at the Data Link 16 as well as the IFF as well as the Situational Awareness page. Now the first things we're going to do is talk about Data Link and IFF. Data Link is a system that allows us to communicate electronically um, or through the data network um, with the other friendly aircraft and radar sources um, around the battle area. So this could be AWACS, friendly fighters, um, radar sources down on the ground, you know, search radars, early warning radars, um, allows them all to communicate um, via a secured link and transmit uh, contact information and uh, target information amongst uh, the, all the aircraft currently on the network. Um, this is very advantageous, especially when in the aspect of using the um, AWACS or flying with wingman, because if a wingman gets a radar contact, he'll be able to report that contact to your aircraft. Okay, and makes it really, really easy to very quickly um, engage hostile aircraft that may be in the area that maybe you weren't seeing previously. <clears throat> okay, so first let's talk about um, the situational awareness page. Okay, so we're going to come down here. Um, it doesn't, it can be on any, whoa, crap, it can be on any screen that you want, um, but I prefer the AMPCD. Okay, and let's go ahead and jump into how to get into it and get it set up. All right, so first thing we're going to do is come to our, oops, unpause, first thing we're going to do. We're going to come to our tactical page and we're going to go to our SA. Okay, now as always, let's go ahead and take a spin around the block, give you guys an idea of what some of these buttons do. First thing, the map um, enables and disables the moving map, the declutter um, gives you a couple of different options as far as decluttering the screen. So I'll go ahead and unpause those as well to give you guys an idea of what those are. So first we go declutter, reject one, removes the compass rows as well as any ground tracks or um, surface to air missile system range rings. Now the range rings are only going to be available if the mission creator um, did not hide them on the F-10 map. So if you go to your F-10 map and you do not see any hostile surface to air missile systems, you're not going to be able to see the threat rings on your SA page. Okay. Um, and then you have, if we were to come back in here real quick, Reject 2 does the same thing Reject 1 does, but it also removes your waypoint and target uh, bearing and distance information, okay? And then you have MREJ1, which will remove any um, of the, it'll hide all of the SAM indications, okay, that are currently being displayed on the SA page. And then MREJ2, my understanding, is not currently implemented, so we're not going to worry about that today. You obviously have your scale. You guys all know how that works. It changes the display scale on the screen. MK2, not currently um Implemented, decenter will take your aircraft and move it all the way to the back of the screen, giving you just a forward view of the battle area. So anything that's going on behind you, you're not going to be uh, privy to. So keep that in mind. Up here, obviously, you have your waypoint uh, bearing and heading information. In our case, we don't have anything selected. So let's go ahead and decenter that, go for our waypoint here um, and move to waypoint one. And you can see that information has changed as well as the waypoint being displayed on the screen when waypoint is um, selected. Oh, it doesn't even have to be a box. That's awesome. And then obviously your typical waypoint controls that you see on the HSI, you have your weapon designate. You can change it to a diamond as well, just like you normally would. Um, <clears throat> and then coming down here, you can also have your sequence on for your sequence of waypoints, as well as using auto to automatically switch to the next waypoint once one is reached. This is a TDC target designator, I believe, that is not currently yet implemented, so we're not going to worry about that as well. Over here, we have our current chaff and flare count on board. These would be the external countermeasure stores if they were available, but um, as I'm sure most of you know, they are currently not available um, at the time of this recording. All right, so then coming over here to the sensor page, this is where things start to get interesting like they weren't already, right? So coming over to the sensor area, now we have the Link 4, which toggles track information being displayed from the Link 4 data link. Then we have our FLTR and HARM. Both of these are not uh, currently implemented, so we won't worry about them. Same thing with IFF, not currently implemented. RWR contacts. Now this gets a little bit interesting. This toggles the display of the four most priority air-to-air -air RWR bearings shown in as a yellow triangle with the emitter identifier. Okay, this affects the SA format itself 
also the radar attack with MSI enabled. So remember in the previous tutorials, for those of you who watched when we were looking at the radar, we were disabling LTWS and MSI. And this is why, okay? We didn't want those RWR contacts to appear on the um, radar attack page. I, we didn't want that. I wanted it to be raw radar. Okay, uh, this always displays hostiles and unknown, but will also display friendly bearings based on the friend setting, which we'll go over in just a second. This is this right here. Um, unbox will show no RWR bearings, all will show all, and then what we have is we have a critical and lethal, which will show any targets with inside the critical or lethal band of the RWR, then just the critical, and then finally disable it, remove again all, R all RWR contacts. Then friendly, this is where things get a little weird. So friendly with no ID. The idea behind this is it's supposed to, my understanding, show that you have a um, RWR, RWR contact, but without showing the emitter type, which is the 18. But um, as you can see, this clearly is displaying that. Um, unless I'm reading this wrong, guys, and by all means, if I am, please correct me down in the field below, and I will obviously correct myself on the next video. And then RWR ID, okay, will actually give you the uh, 18 information. In this case, these are F-18 Hornets. Okay, and then finally off will remove any of the uh, friendly contacts from the RWR. And which brings us to unknown. Unknown will toggle the display of any unknown HAFU track files. So any aircraft that can't be identified. And then we have the OCS-1 and OCS-2. Um, these are not yet implemented. We're not going to worry about these. FF. These are will toggle uh, track file information displayed from fighter to fighter donors. So any other F-18s, F-16s, etc. that are in the area also tracking targets and transferring that information to us. This will toggle that on and off. And then the PPLI, okay, toggles the track file information being displayed from precise participant location and identification donors. This means that any friendly aircraft, and you can see them by this full circle here, any friendly aircraft that is basically telling you where he is and what he is, um, you can turn that on and off. And so like I can show you guys real quick here. If we turn that off, you notice that these now become um, unknown hafus, but with a friendly context. So we know they're friendlies, but um, we can't identify them. But we turn that back on, and it's actually them telling us who they are, where they are, etc. Okay? All right. And then finally, serve is any uh, information be being displayed from surveillance donors. So AWACS and uh, RWRs and things like that, or EWRs and things like that. Okay, so that pretty much covers the um, uh, sensors page. So let's go ahead and bounce out of this for a second. Okay, so any of coming down here to any of these here, this is called a C2 HAFU, which represents a command and control aircraft. So to put it easily for us, this is my AWACS. Okay, this is an E3. It's what, but so the rings with the dot on the outside edges. Basically, what you can extrapolate from those right off the bat is those are friendly fighters that are transmitting data to us. The aircraft, the ring with the dot in the circle and on the edge, those are going to be your AWACSs, okay? So let's just keep moving on here and see what else we can find. Okay, so now let's look at some of the information that's now being displayed. So we have our RWR contacts, okay? So we know there's a couple MiG-29s or something with a MiG-29 signature out there at least. And then here we have um, 18s, okay, um, at least I think those are 18s. Let's find out. So what we can do here is take our TDC, so we're going to make this our sensor of interest, okay. And actually let's start identifying some of these here that we have on the screen before I get too far ahead of myself. Alright, so we've already identified any of these half circles here are going to identify a friendly, okay. And then you have these half -hoos, okay, that are going to identify an unknown or unidentified or ambiguous, okay, basically is the way to think about these guys. But they're basically unknown aircraft is the way to look at these right now. Here's the MiG-29 contact signature that we saw before from the RWR. Now, with these as my sensor of interest, we can go ahead and move this around. And you can see that we see the unknown here, okay, but you see it's starting to peg, okay, we're starting to get some identifiers. 
So let's see if we get any donor information. Boom, now we got one. One of them's been identified. And that's what's happening is we're scaling over them. Let's see if they're close enough to zoom in. Nope. All right, so let's do this. And we got, okay, perfect. There we go, right there. Pause. Let's pause a second. So here is what we got. Let's take a look at what that is. Okay, so what we've got here is this indicates a friendly fighter donor track. So one of our friendly aircraft is tracking this, okay? And this indicates the direction it's heading. Okay, so we know that we have a friendly track and it looks like a one, two, three, possibly, possibly four um, friendly tracks. Okay, but the biggest thing to remember is that we are not currently tracking this. This is being tracked by a friendly. Okay, and then if we keep on going here, same with this guy here, okay? This diamond here does not indicate that we are tracking this. This, ind the red diamond indicates our surveillance is tracking it, but we can also extrapolate this as hostile. Okay, red indicates hostile, so they've been identified by both donors. These have been identified probably by these F-18s, and this one was identified by our AWACS, okay, as a, <clears throat> um, as a hostile contact, okay? And so the biggest thing to just keep in mind is friendly fighter and, again, surveillance. That way you know where the source is, right? Now let's go ahead and if we use our TDC here, something else I want to show you guys. Let's put our TDC down here and let's hit the step button. Now if we hit the step, what this is going to do is it puts a box around the highest ranked um, track currently available to us okay so the highest rank track file it puts this box on it if the TDC is not already on a, a track file and then what we can do is unpause so you can see that it's currently at 0.5 Mach at 10,000 feet SU 27 bearing of 091 at 47 okay and we step to it and we can step through his other tracks and they've all been identified as SU 27s okay and then you keep cycling through and now we get into more unknowns but if you move your tdc around you clear that now let's put our tdc over here and hit the step again we get the same information and we can step through these though so let's see if we can't find oh jumped over let's see if we can get back on that all right so he's still coming back as unknown and then we're going to bounce around a bit obviously and cycle through all the different um tracks <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go. Now it's identifying. So you can see now the track file has changed, and now we have it identified as an SU-27 as well. Okay, so the biggest thing for the SA page is to recognize that there's a ton of information on it that can get you very, very far. Okay, and what we can do is, like on these guys that are coming right at us, okay, I just sent an IFF interrogation to it, okay? And how I'm doing that is by hitting my sensor select depress, and it will come back with a track. And actually, you know what, I think that has to be done on the radar. Disregard that, guys, for a second. So we're making the, oh no, we got it, yep. So by hitting IFF, I have been able to, we were the ones who were able to do that, that's ours. Um, and we were able to ascertain that it is a hostile, and you can see that it was automatically made our LNS. Okay, this diamond here, okay, this is what we were talking about earlier. This is our um, surveillance track, so the AWACS is tracking this guy here, okay? Um, so it's really awesome the way that these all these systems sort of tie into each other. So you get the same information up on your radar as you get on the SA page. I mean, if you look at it closely, you have all the unknowns that were down here. Let me, let's do this. They're coming in close enough. I think we can get away with it now. Okay, so we get all of our unknowns. There's our unknowns. You got the surveillance track. There's our surveillance track. Here's our um, identified hostile that we did our IFF interrogation on. And by the way, IFF interrogation can also be done on the radar by simply doing what's called a TUC, which is a track under cursor. So we just mouse over it and see if it identifies. Now typically that your best bet for that is going to be in under 25 nautical miles 
but that's not a hard fact. Okay, you can get IFF responses back from further distances. See, so I just pressed my IFF interrogation there and got a response on him. And I'm trying to get this third guy here. There he is. And boom, there. Now I got all the IFF interrogations on these guys. Okay, I'm willing to bet they're getting shot down. I bet the, the AI, no matter what you tell them, somehow they always end up shooting at each other. All right. So anyway, that's a quick overview of the SA page and how it integrates with the radar as well. Real quick demonstration on um, what's going to be unknown. So these guys are also considered unknown. Again, we come over them and press our sensor, uh, sensor select depress button and do an IFF interrogation. You can see we got a response on that one. Okay, um, if you don't get a response, um, remember the threshold in the documentation is between 25 nautical miles and shorter, but you can get out a little bit further than that at times, so it, it, I think it's all based on the situation. Okay, again, look at the way the two systems integrate, learn how to sort of correlate the information that you're seeing and what's coming from who. I think that's the hardest part about SA page is understanding where the information is coming from. Okay, because these guys, for example, we're still not currently tracking. Like if you notice that when I mouse over these guys, I get information. When I mouse over these two, I do not. Okay, so for example, let's see if we can't get a hold of these guys real quick. Okay, although I'm really curious why we're not getting them. I don't think they're that high. Let's go up higher. Oh, there they are. There they are. There they are. There they are. They're up high. So this is what it, this is one of those examples where you have to manipulate your radar to to really track things down. But there we go, we pegged them. So they are up at twenty eight thousand feet. So we weren't scanning high enough. So again, for me in my case, I would have been dead. But there's a perfect example of where you can take the information that's been given to you by other aircraft and then manipulate your radar to hopefully get on target. I just was waiting too long to scan up above altitude because I didn't think I put anybody up that high. But um, anyway, I know this was sort of a ramble, sort of bounce around a little bit, but I hope you guys got to see enough of it in action to extrapolate what's going on. Any questions, comments, or omissions, things that I need to go over again, please, please, please leave, let me know in the comments below. Um, that's how the TWS2 video came out, was because people were making it clear that I hadn't done my job quite right. So I hope you guys are enjoying these. Um, again, the F-18 is coming close to a wrap here. We only got a few more to go. Um, and then we'll be moving on to a new aircraft. So if you guys want to start uh, hitting me up and letting me know what aircraft y'all would like to see, currently it sounds like the F-16 is on the table, but you know there's the JF-17 out there, and then of course all the other aircraft that have been out for a while. If you guys are interested in warbirds, let me know, or helicopters, we can certainly look into that. All right, so I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.